Now there is a word from the Lord this morning. Amen. That word is found, oh my goodness, in the book of Exodus, Old Testament book of the Torah, the third chapter. Exodus, the third chapter, verses, thir verses 11 through 15. Exodus, the third chapter, verses 11 through 15. Where well, these words are recorded. Amen. Exodus 11, the third chapter 11 through 15 says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go to, unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God up this, upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob yeah. has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my, my memorial unto all generations. The word of God to the people of God. Let us hide them in our heart yeah. that we might not sin against our God. I would like to use this morning for a subject a, or just a question for us to ponder on. Do you know his name? Look to your neighbor and say, do you know his name? See, church, when we as Christians deal with any scripture, the first thing we must understand that no scripture stands alone. They are always supported by other scripture. In other words, the word of God when, when dealing with the Old Testament especially has a forward progression. See, God is always going somewhere with his word. Yeah. So Exodus that we are dealing with today continues the account of Genesis. Yeah. Although there's a lapse of at least 350 years. Mm -hmm. Now Genesis 15 and 13 says that the seed of Abraham would spend 400 years in Egypt. Exodus 12 and 40 says that it was 430 years that they actually spent in Egypt. Then you can go forward to Galatians 3 and 16 through 17, and it confirms it. Now, it was 430 years from the call of Abraham and 400 years from the time that God told Abraham that they would 
spend this time in Egypt. Why is this so important? See, it is important because it, Genesis itself covers 2,300 years of more. And anybody that we talk about in the book of Genesis up until Exodus does not know God's name. All they knew was he was the God of their father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Which means that these people who did not know God's name, they operated strictly by faith. What they believe about Abraham, what they believed about Isaac, what they believed according to Jacob. But how many know today as Christians, what we must have is different from this? See, again, the progression was forward to the coming of Christ, but today we already know Christ has been here. Now, do you know his name? See, when we think about the word of God and the people that we talk about in the Bible, we, we have to understand that these people, none of them had a Bible. All right. So what they actually relied on was the fact that they had a relationship with a God that was not like any other God in this world. Now the book of Exodus is called the book of names in the Hebrew Bible. In the Hebrew Bible, all the books are called after their opening words. And the book of Exodus, if you check at the first chapter and the first verse, it opens like this. These are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob. Whether this title is coincidental or not, names are very important in this book. Some names are given and some names are not given. The names of the 12 sons of Israel are given in the opening verses of the book and then three times over in the remainder of the chapter. We are told that generations of people multiplied greatly in Egypt, but no names are given at all. Signifying that once that perhaps the quality or state of being of the people was unknown. Or that they were just faceless, a faceless mass and the absence of anyone in their midst that stood out as, as particularly noteworthy. Or their names did not exist because they were going to die in the wilderness out of disobedience to God. You see, if you want to get something from God, just be disobedient. Now, people may not check you, but I promise you, God will chasten his people. Now, that, that's it, his people, because you got to belong to God before he, before he considers you his people. Now, he chose Israel. But we have to choose him. Now somewhat surprisingly, we are told the names of Shephira and Pua, the two midwives who out of the fear of God, they feared not to disobey Pharaoh. Even the great Pharaoh whose name most notable is not given as though he were of no ultimate significance. See, for a long time I thought his name was actually Pharaoh. But then I realized that, that they, they all, all the, the kings, the uh, uh, leaders of that time were called Pharaohs.
We are not given the names of Moses' mother or father in these scriptures. We are not given the names of his sister. We are not given the name of Pharaoh's daughter who took care of Moses, which makes us focus on the naming of Moses. His name not only is given, but the meaning is given also. You see, Moses was significant in God's plan to deliver his people. His name meant that he was drawn out of the water. Now Moses was perhaps drawn out of the same water that buried the numerous amounts of Hebrew baby boys around two and a half years old. See, Satan, uh, uh, I almost say Satan, he was just like Satan, working for Satan. But Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, charged all of his people, saying, every son that is born, cast them into the river. Yes. But every daughter, save them alive. Now Moses' name was a pointer to the fact that he was drawn out of the water. That he would be a deliverer of his people through the waters of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Then the same waters would bury Pharaoh and his army. Yeah. Now church, we approach the most significant name of all. We are still at the bush that wouldn't burn and the holy voice that spoke from the flames. Now if I were to, was to describe the scene, what I would tell you is Moses, the future leader of the people was in the desert. Before he ever saw a bush, Moses watched the skinny flocks of Jethro, which browsed upon whatever they could find in the desert. Mm -hmm. Moses lived a life as, as almost as materially restricted as the, as the animals that he kept. See, Moses was a shepherd. Now, shepherds in deserts and animals go together. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times the true shepherds stayed in the deserts with their animals until they died. Yes. In the ancient middle, in the Middle East, they called them better ones. One assignment to keep God's sheep yes. until they die. Mm -hmm. See, but this Moses didn't die in the desert. He communed with God within himself. And then one day when the sun rolled fierce in the heavens yes. and the dust devils and mirages danced and flickered among the scrubs in the desert, he saw a, the burning bush. It burned, but yet it was not consumed. Yes. Church, the more it burned, the less it was consumed. Yeah. It would seem to Moses like the bush would renew itself from within. A lot of theologians said perhaps it was not a bush at all, but the fire that was in Moses' heart, the flame that was in his heart, that, it, that, that it would never be quenched until the people of God would be delivered. You know, the truth is, we may never understand this event. We may, we may never understand the deliverance of ancient Israel. It's meaning for all of us, nor understand the meaning of the divine name that is revealed unless we understand the brutal reality of human nature. Amen. See, human nature is something else. It is the very nature of man to take on the spirit of the enemy if he don't choose God. All right. That's why we can see man will take a race of people and oppress them for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. Here we see God's people be 
who had been oppressed for over 430 years. No matter how much oppression we go through, we can bet our bottom dollar that there's one thing that we will always understand. In the midst of anything we go through, we must always understand if we belong to God, God will always, not sometimes, God will always deliver his people. Now you probably heard the story of Moses and, and the burning bush just like I did and thought originally that this bush was some kind of magic. And we certainly did not understand the brutal slavery of God's people, the cruel oppression and suffering that tugged at the heart of God, which made him reveal his name. But if we're not, but if we are to understand the significance then, 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 then it now, the significance now, we must see it just like Moses did in the flesh. How far do we have to think back to understand how brutal man could be? Yes. How far would we have to look? How far or what city would we have to look at? What country would we have to look back? I stopped by this morning to tell you that God will identify himself in the midst of our suffering. You see, in the Old Testament times, God would just tell his people that I am the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that was enough. But he knew, God knew at some point, every generation needed to know his name and who they could call on in the midst of trouble. Yeah. Now in the third chapter of Exodus, God called and commissioned Moses to be the deliverer of his people. When he spoke to Moses from the burning bush, he let Moses know that the ground he stood on was holy ground. Yeah. He told Moses, I have seen the affliction of my people, yeah. which are in Egypt. He said, I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmaster. He said, I know their sorrows, and I have come down myself to deliver my people. You see, church, God himself must be identified if his people needs a deliverance. Ebenezer, do you need a deliverance from anything today? Do you need a deliverance from any bad habits? Do you need a deliverance from drug addiction? Do you need a deliverance from cigarettes? Do you need a deliverance from prescription drugs? Do you need a deliverance from any sickness in your body? Do you need a deliverance from unforgiveness? Or do you just need to be delivered? See, church, I stopped this morning to let anybody know that if you need a deliverance, if you need God for anything, or you need anything done in your life, yes. nobody can get you out of anything but God. Anybody else will just be a vessel that God decided to use. Look to your neighbor and say, do you know his name? Look to the other neighbor beside you and say, do you know his name? That's all right. Now, still in the third chapter of Exodus, God deals with Moses about the deliverance of his people. God lets Moses know that, that, that he would send him to Pharaoh to bring his people out. Immediately Moses complained. Does this remind you of anybody you know? Do you know that Moses had over 11 complaints about not doing the assignment that God calls him to do? Now I'm not going to bore you with 11, but I'm going to give you two other complaints that Moses had. 
Complaint number one is found in Exodus 3 and 13 and 11, which says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Now, when God commissions you to do something for the kingdom of God, for the betterment of somebody else, our question should not be, Who am I? Our question should not be even be, why me? Because if God is with us, how many know today that God, if God is for us, then who can be against us? Complaint number two, verse 13 says, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they say, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God answers them in the 14th birth and says, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Then verse 15 says, And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Now, Ebenezer, before I take my seat, today as Christians, we need to know that our God has a name. We, know how, we need to know how to reach him by his name. God's word says, my name is I am, then I am. And see, that is translated Jehovah, Yahweh, which refers to God's divine salvation. If we're going to know God in a divine way, we need to know so when we have to call on him for whatever we need. See, we need to know God for every need in our life. And if we're his children, and we're in different situations, or di different circumstances, we ought to know him as Jehovah Makadesh, the Lord who is our sanctifier. I know somebody here today needs to be saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fire baptized. We need to know him if we need a shepherd. That name is Jehovah Roi. The Lord is my shepherd. Now we need sometimes a healing in our body. We need to know him as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. We need to know him as Jehovah Tiskanu, the Lord our righteousness. We need to know him, church, as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that will provide. You need to know him as Jehovah Nisi, the Lord who is our banner. We need to know him as Jehovah Shalom, the Lord who is our peace. We need to know him, oh church, as, the, as Jehovah Sabbath, the Lord of hosts. We need to know him as Jehovah Gamala, the God of recompense. You ought to just know him as Yahweh or Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Ruach Kadesh. That's why, church, today we ought to bless the Lord at all times. His praises should continue to be in our, continue to be in our mouth. His praises should continually be in our mouth. My soul shall make a boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with thee. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Church, do you know him? Do you know him, church? Don't fool me now. Do you know him? Who is he, who is he to you? That's what we need to decide on an individual basis. I don't know about you, but to me, he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Lamb slain before the foundations of the world. He is the Alpha and the Omega. To me, church, he is the beginning and the end. To me, he is the 
one which is, which was, and which is to come. To everybody he ought to be. The, 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 the almighty God. Do you know him? Do you know him? If you know him today, church, say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Bless the name of our God.